people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new lecture on C programming. So what are we learning today? For loops. Basically, you're learning how to create a loop. Trust me, my friend, once you know how to create a loop, you'll be amazed at how many new options come in front of you when it comes to writing programs. Most big programs are basically a small program put in a loop. Are we clear? Like this video. When this video is being streamed to your phone, it's coming byte by byte, part by part. So that one part, one small byte that comes is being put in a loop. And that's how the loop will end for the length of this video. Uh, again, when the pixels are displayed on the screen and so on, I can go on the whole day. You want to add a series of numbers. You want to make a grand total. You don't write a program to add a series of numbers. You write a program to add one number and then put it in a loop. When the loop runs for the length of the series, your whole series gets added. You want to copy and paste a file. You're not copying and pasting the whole file. The program is written to copy and paste one byte, one single value. And then that program runs in a loop to copy your whole file. The size of the loop is the size of your file and so on. Like I said, there's so many things that are done using loops. So a good programmer must be very comfortable when it comes to writing loops. And that's what you will be by the end of today's lecture. There are various types of loops, for loops, while loops, do while loops. I'm going to teach you all of them. Today's lecture is about for loops. First, I'll teach you the concept, how the loop works, the basic syntax, the various rules which are associated with those syntax. Once it's done, we will keep doing practice programs, program after program after program till the time you're absolutely comfortable. Anybody wakes you up in the middle of your sleep and asks you to create a loop, you should be able to do that. Are you clear? Now, uh, this whole lecture and the whole course is there on my website, bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link is given down below. Click on the link, register yourself as a user. Uh, you'll see a bunch of courses. Select the course of C programming. As soon as you make the payment, the course becomes active. You can watch the videos instantly as many times as you want. Your subscription is active for six months. This is the 11th video. We'll be making many more after looping, after all the various types of loops and nested loops. We'll get into arrays. When you combine loops and arrays together, you can do so many things. So we'll be getting into arrays again, one dimensional, two dimensional arrays, and then structures, and then various other things will follow. Many students have already joined. Don't wait for the whole course to be over. I keep saying that in every video. As soon as you get that urge that now I want to learn programming, get on with it. Programming is something once you know it for one language, you know it for all. You know, you learn the skill, the art of writing programs, the art of the, the skill of making a loop of doing decision making using ifs, etc. Then when you go from one language to the other, just the syntax changes, but the concepts remain the same. All right, so the whole video will be there on my website. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well. So let's begin. First of all, what does the syntax look like? This is how you create a for loop. You use the keyword for. You put three different things inside this bracket. I'm going to teach you each one of them. And this code is basically the part that you want to do again and again. So this is going to be your loop code. And these will be extra things that you write to create this loop. Now, what these things are? First of all, initialization. Now for this initialization, use a variable. It can be any data type. Yes, most people use int. Most cases you'll require an int, but that doesn't mean that it can only be an int data type. You know there are various data types, right? So it can be an integer. It can be a float. Yes, it can also be a character. I'm going to show you examples of all of them. So this can be of any data type. It may start from zero. Most likely we started from zero and then we take it up to the count, but you can go backwards. You can start from the top and go all the way down. So there are various ways in which you can create this loop. Let's first learn the most standard way and then we'll play with it. 